What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. I've had a, quite a few questions about why I'm using Cache OS over normal Arch, which I usually turn into Cache OS. It's because the work is done for me. I got a lot of videos to do. I got a lot of things to edit. I got a lot of time that I need not wasted. And there's a lot of things that Cache OS does better than stock Arch and does better than what I can do because there's a lot of things that they do under the hood that just make it a more stable experience which is one of the things that end up bringing me back to, well, Arch Linux, or in other words, Cache OS. One of the really cool things is that they have this pretty little app in the repos. So I don't need to compile it, I don't need to use the janky Flathub, and I have a working version of this just straight out of the box. Moving on to point number two is the fact that they do have their own gaming meta but unfortunately their gaming meta sort of interferes with some of the stuff that i do with wine when i'm trying to get applications like adobe premiere pro to work and other applications like illustrator and so on it it tends to interfere with those and those are a big must for me because i am trying to get these type of things working for people so that everybody is able to have the applications they want on Linux. So I have to use the Arch Gaming Meta instead, which uses all stock components, which I love more than anything. If you are the developer of the Arch Gaming Meta, I need you to do me a quick favor and add the Heroic Game Launcher, please. It would mean a lot, and it would be a major upgrade because so many people are using that now more than Lutris and other applications because it just works. So if you're watching this, help the fella out. I removed the webcam temporarily until I can find a position where it works. It's a thing. Something always interferes with it, so whatever. Moving on to the next thing is the kernel. Because I automatically always use their kernel anyway, I figured it'd be the best chance to be able to just jump in and enjoy my life. We are currently on the 6.10.0 kernel, and this is revision 1. And the reason we're on this kernel is because it's the newest, it's honestly the most stable. It has been it has been the most stable in years. I've had none of the issues I've had with 6.8, I've had none of the issues I've had with 6.9. 6.10 has been out of the box perfect. Uh, boot times are faster. I've noticed some performance increases in Guild Wars 2 and other titles, about 4 to 5 FPS extra really heavy demanding areas in guild wars 2 now run way better and i actually reached 57 fps outside of the wizard's tower where normally i'm stuck between 39 to 48 so that is a huge must for me so it's a term of stability and performance the 6.10 kernel all the way and this kernel manager is very helpful there's lots of things to choose from uh this is still my go-to for performance but it's one day I will move over to a different type of kernel and maybe have an even better experience with that. I don't know. I'll have to try them out eventually. And the next thing is the NVIDIA drivers. Now I'm going to show you this through the terminal. And the terminal's not big, bad, and scary. If you're new to Linux and you're watching this, the terminal is the thing you want to learn the most because it's the backbone of every Linux distro. Even if this one does have a GUI for this stuff, I'm not a fan of it. I am not a fan of GUIs anymore. So it has this. This is the NVIDIA Open Kernel Modules. This allows you to just have out-of-the-box working NVIDIA drivers. They'll always update to the newest. And six. And then the 560 is coming next, which is purely open. And I honestly can't wait. Currently... On my streams, I've been using the NVIDIA Open Driver because the 555.58.02 fixed a lot of issues, stuttering, and performance problems with the Open Driver. If you remember, we were getting stuttering and a huge loss in performance. That's now completely gone, and I'm so happy about that. So that's is another reason why you use Cache OS because if you're an NVIDIA user, you're taken care of instantly out of the box. You never have to really worry. And that is huge for some people because people want that these days. You got old time Arch users like me who want to be taken care of because they don't really have the time to be doing all this configuration and stuff like that. I mean, I sound tired as hell right now. I'm not even streaming tonight because I need a break. I need to just hang out and chill. 
So this is your video, your secondary video for today, guys. I hope you appreciate it. And if I do end up streaming, well, I am just mentally screwed up to the point where I can't help myself, which is completely fine because then you guys get entertainment. If you guys, you don't know, I stream almost every night, except for tonight, because I need to hang out and just chill. Also, it's hot, so my temperatures on idle are a bit much. So I get me new thermal paste, but I stream. And currently we're working our way through the entire Halo series. So Halo 1, 2, ODST, Halo 3, Halo 4. Uh, we'll also probably do, if I can get my hands on it, uh, Halo Wars 1 and 2. I own Halo Wars 2, unfortunately, on Game Pass. So I'll have to see about finding a copy of that for uh, Steam eventually. But Halo Wars is awesome. And uh, I'm not touching Reach. I'm sorry if this hurts your feelings, but Reach was clunky, poorly written, cash grab garbage. A last ditch effort to try to maintain control over the Halo series on Bungie's side. And I'm just tired of it. I never liked it. I played through it once and honestly, the campaign was one of the most boring on original cliche things I've ever touched in my life. Anyway, moving on from that, another thing that you'll end up getting is i believe a good message driver let's see you so see you get 24.1.3 in the version 2 so it's all caught up with arch which is nice but i believe you can also grab messa git if i believe correctly yes they also have messa git in the rip in the repos which is a really 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 good thing now they don't exactly have the best obs in the world their obs is okay but honestly, I like installing my own from the Chaotic AUR. It gets me everything I need. Uh, and again, compatibility with the Chaotic AUR is really cool because I get my game capture. Uh, if we right click here, go to filters. I, you'll notice that I get my background removal, which again, doesn't work uh, for some reason. And contour correction. I don't even know what the hell this is, but it made me look pretty. I also end up getting uh, some other cool stuff from this. So if we hit add here, you'll see there's three G streamer source. And I don't know why the hell is that. Oh God, did we log into X11? Did we? Oh, I was doing testing last night in X11 with Shad PS4. Man, I hate X11. We're on X11, unfortunately. Is our windows moving okay? Okay, we're good. Wow. It is what it is. Whatever. So, yeah, I have my own custom stable version of OBS, which is 30.2. So I have all the latest features with that, including uh, the AV1 support and all that other stuff. Another cool thing that I like is the AUR. And the fact that I can literally just install Cache OS and sudo pacman capital S. Yay. And then install that and I have the game ready to go. The AUR is a really big thing when it comes to applications for me because it has almost everything that I need. And what I don't, what it doesn't have is CIDR. Okay, CIDR 2. Uh, for those who don't know, this is the program that I use for music. We're going to open it up. Everything's opening up on that other screen. It's making me mad. But this is an Apple Music app that... Uh, Gives you everything your heart desires and more. So if I hit play and I hit this button, you'll notice these things happen. And there's a lot of cool features to it. There's this mode. This is a really good song, by the way. This is her fighting back against an abuser that pretty much tried to end her music career. Awesome song. And uh, if you've ever had issues in your life where you felt like People are trying to bury you alive. Yeah, maybe it's time to do what she did and blossom. Now, there's also other cool stuff. So you have cover flow and animated animations, uh, animated visuals. So, you know, here you go. And you can just, if you miss this feature in iTunes, here you go. Cool little feature. A Apple had to remove it doing to a lawsuit that they had to face, which I find ridiculous. Who the hell has copyright over cover flow. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The fact that people are allowed to do that is just, it's downright stupid. Now, 
another thing people ask me why do you use gnome over kde well it's simple kde is just our uh, kde is just really extremely buggy i have videos in the past where i show and go over all the bugs and once i notice a bug i can't unsee it so there's a huge list of bugs for me that i need fixed before i can ever consider kde a usable desktop environment for my needs also i can set up gnome faster than i can set up kde to suit me so uh here's the extensions that i use the ones that are not there or not supposed to be there so we're going to hide in it uh inactive so uh let's actually add my location here real quick Halifax there and that is correct good so yeah I had to add that and we're good to go so there I use UST which shows a whole bunch of extra options here uh, which is nice and app indicator shows the application icons arc menu gives me a menu over here on this side that allows me for easy access so i don't have to use the launcher all the time blur my shell gives this nice little blur effect and so on and so forth there's lots of really nifty things and this is not this is how i also do it on fedora this is also how i did it on clear linux and all my distros that i end up using i will always use gnome because it is just far more stable and I love that they actually take their time adding things in. Like, they take their time with HDR. They took their time with VR. They take their time with everything that they need to to make sure they get it right. And I am so patiently waiting for GNOME 47. The accent colors are going to give this a definite boost of my own personal style. I like the color purple. So having that in would definitely uh, boost my design and my love even more. Now... I use impatience to get rid of a bug where sometimes the animations would bug out for some reason and it is what it is there's also downsides to using kde like i do have kde installed in case i do need it and i don't know if i can actually open up the settings to show you no i can't are you serious can we just get a fly please i hate this this is this pisses me off so much that this happens i need to find a way to fix this but pretty much what happens is this is an it just kde is too messy for me i can't handle it it bugs the shit out of my ocd and if you know me i barely swear and this this is clean everything is organized like if i want it date and time it's right here am pm done uh if i wanted to deal with power it's right there i could put on performance if i wanted to deal with appearance there it is done uh if i wanted to set default apps I can go in here and set the default apps so this would be for whatever it is app is not sandboxed it tells you and more pretty much this is as clean as it needs to be and honestly i have one issue with it the fact that everything is dead centered you know i wish it was over here and it would fill out this spot and then when you click the app it would open up a secondary menu here and then if there was an extra option that needed to be open, all of this would be full and filled out. That would be awesome. Okay, GNOME developers? Great, thanks. Now, the gaming performance is amazing. You guys can go check my past live streams to see that. But uh, we spent a ton of time gaming on Cache OS, little to no issue, with great high-end performance. And it was absolutely brilliant. So gaming's not an issue. Stability is not an issue. NVIDIA drivers are not an issue. Uh, out of the box, my Wi-Fi drivers work, as you can see right there. Uh, power saving mode works, so performance, balanced, all that works. Bluetooth, I had to enable. It is what it is. And all my extensions are here. So moving to this, because this does work with Shad PS4, was a logical decision. End of story. The wizard's tower is already loud.
Start. Mythic on. And I know I could have easily gone and did what I do in my current Arch Linux gaming guide. By the way, I do have one in case you're one of those users that want Arch Linux, but you want it to be uh, Casio SFI, I guess I could call it. It's, it's in here somewhere, I swear. Let's do Arch Linux gaming and see what pops up. There it is. So this video right here goes over how to get everything that I just said done but Cache OS covers more and this is honestly a very successful guide 56k views and little to no users have had issues this is designed and built for beginners from the ground up so if you want to have if you want to learn Arch Linux a lot this is the way to do it because we go through optimizations we go through kernels we go through drivers we go through the gaming meta, we go through everything, and you end up coming out on top a lot better in your knowledge of Linux from start. So this is the guide for you if you want a Cache OS-like experience, but you want to get there yourself. 
Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. It helps me a lot. I'm trying to reach 30k by the end of the year. And I would really appreciate it if you went and you hit the like button on this video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.